back to the DTD Real Estate Show. Thank you for joining with our podcast today. We are going to talk about question-based selling. Dwayne, this is something you've used your entire career. How important is question-based selling? Yeah, it's the only way to sell. I think so many people, the biggest mistakes they make are diving into a sales pitch where they start telling. And Brian Tracy said it best when he said telling is not selling. So as you look through most people's sales cycles and, and theories on how they, they get business, it's they want to tell you what you should do. And the last thing somebody wants is to be told what to do, number one. And number two, if they feel like you're going to get money off of what they tell you to do, they immediately repel it and think, no, I'm not doing this. They're, they're just saying these things to get me to buy. Well, you know, what's interesting. I, I, as the principal broker, I get to sign all these listing agreements. So I see all of Dwayne's listing agreements. 6% commission, 6% commission, 6% commission, just all the time. And like a fee on top of the 6% commission is a flat fee you charge in addition. And your, cl- your clients are signing these things left and right. And they love it. And, and, and when they close, they're not complaining about right. the costs. And so you get them from the like inception till closing, you, tr- you have them travel that journey based on question-based selling. I think as long as you're confident in the way you present your business, and you can guide them through the process to where they're closing themselves, it never becomes a question. The commission part of it never becomes a question. The sell part never becomes a question. They're, they're literally wondering what the next step is. And it's guiding them through a process where they can answer for themselves how they want to be sold. So I, I focus a lot on personalities and, and selling to personalities. And the DISC personality profile is a, a, a very commonly used profile in our industry. And so as you look at those various letters, and we, we could do a whole different training and podcast alone about the DISC personality profile test, but you look at those different personalities, the, DI, the, the D, the I, the S, the C. What's interesting is each of those personalities likes to be approached differently. However, question-based selling works on absolutely every single one of those personalities. I agree. And so I think part of your success and the success that I've likewise had in my career is we understand the right questions to ask to, to lead that client down the journey of first meeting you to signing a, uh, an agency agreement to closing on a home to close, like to the final closing, getting paid out. Well, it's, it's amazing to think the process is there. Um, you know, most of the agents that I've worked with and taught, I, I ask them to keep track of how many questions they ask when they first meet somebody. And today we did a role play with an with a agent that I said, okay, we're sitting down at a listing appointment. I want you to tell me what you are going to help me do and why and guide me through a listing appointment. We went for two and a half minutes and I stopped him and said, how many questions have you asked me? And he goes, uh, none. And I think that's the, the theory with most salespeople is they do not find out what's most important to the person buying or selling. And um, if, if you don't, you're never going to know how to close them because they will tell you every time how they want to be closed. You just have to ask the questions through. And, and my rule of thumb is you should be 20 to 30 questions, at least. How many people get into industry where into this industry where this is their first sales job? There's quite a few others, I'd say. And so they come with no background at all of other sales you know, careers or professions. They come straight here with zero sales training. How much sales training does a person get in their licensing courses? None. There's absolutely zero. Right. And then they go to a brokerage that teaches them, well, here's how you fill out the listing. Here's how you upload the listing to the MLS, whatever it is. It's not selling. They don't teach actual sales techniques. Greg, have you been to buy a car at a car lot? Yeah. You get there, the, the guy comes up to you and he says, so what are you looking for? And you say, well, I'm looking for this certain brand, this color. How many times do they try to sell you a different model, a different color, and get you to buy something while you're right there, even though it's not even close to what you're looking for? Yeah. Oh, constantly. Yeah. And it, it's so interesting when you look at the sales tactics that are pushy that have ruined our society. Because as soon as you start selling somebody, they consider you to be a pushy, aggressive salesperson. That's trying to push your agenda so you make a commission. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing how much the guard comes down when you start asking questions and then guiding them through a sales process. One of our agents, Dwayne, so he's been with me for many, many years. 
And when that agent first met you, her comment to me was, I, I, I know he comes from like a sales background. Like how salesy is this person? And uh, so she had this sort of, con- you know, preconceived notion, like you've said, like pushy salesperson, mm-hmm. which you aren't. You could because you approach people with question based selling. But what's interesting is she's sort of listened to your training on sales, and then she's gone out and done her listing appointments. She's realized because she's never had any sales training in the past. Uh, she called me the other day and she just said, "You know, Craig, I I'm finally realizing the value of question based selling." I, she said, I missed out on a listing appointment. And as I called the seller afterwards, I said, why did you choose this other agent, not me? And they began to relay information to me. I never figured out during the listing process. I realized I lost because I did not ask questions. It really, I think, is the most critical thing. And, and you don't come over. I think people that implement question-based selling, they don't come across as a pushy salesperson. They come across as someone who's genuinely interested in getting to know you and your needs. And uh, I think it's I think it's kudos to you, Dwayne, in how you've approached the sales environment around you, where people come to you not because of your uh, like pushy sales techniques, but because of your techniques of sales that attract, where they look to you as an advisor, someone that they would rely upon your expertise. I think that's essential. If you come across as a know-it-all just trying to push your knowledge and information, it doesn't get you very far anywhere in life. Um, I I look at this as you can guide them through a process as long as you're listening. And they should be doing the majority of the talking. Mm -hmm. We should dominate the majority of the listening. So as we listen, they tell us all the information we need to. And the neat thing is the person that does the questions wins every time. The one that's dominating the talking will lose every time because they will run out of things to say. Whereas when I'm listening, I can guide them with the next question. I've got a minute in between the the question I asked as they keep talking to find out what points I can hit, what ways I can take them. And it's with anything in life. My wife has heard me done or do enough of these question-based selling courses that even as we're discussing and I'm trying to get, uh, you know, something that I want, I can ask her questions and guide her through the process. And she's finally caught on to it now to where she can say, hey, stop question-based selling me. (laughs) <laughs> and, um, but it's funny cause you can keep asking more questions and turn it right around and she has no clue that I'm still back at it and end up getting what you want. So question-based selling is something that most people have no clue how to do, but yet it's an art that will cause you to be able to sell anything at any time and be able to get where you want to go because it comes across as a genuine pureness that people are willing to talk. They want to be heard. And runs completely contrary to that uh, slimy salesperson technique. Correct. So the trust is there. So a few benefits that I see from this. Commissions. Okay. 6% commissions. Charging additional fees. And people willingly signing requires the right sales training, the right questions. Getting someone to sign a listing agreement requires the right listing, or the right questions. So in my career... I've been in, I've sold hundreds of sellers and I can count on one hand, maybe two of how many times I've shown up to a listing appointment where I did not get the listing. Why? I knew exactly what to say. I knew the questions to ask. And then I had, I had the the right sales process to lead them from meeting them to signing them up. Did you spend a lot of time listening or were you mostly... Just knowing what to say and just pushing through your agenda. A lot of time, a lot of time listening, understanding exactly what their needs were, and then fulfilling those needs. Super simple, super easy. And then they come and they respect me as a as an advisor and someone that cares about them and uh, that they want to do business with over and over and over again. So anyone listening to the podcast today, I would tell you, please record yourself and go back and listen to it, because you will know how much talking you're doing. And how many questions you're asking. In, in reality, if you're not just guiding the whole conversation strictly with questions, you're messing up. And you got to start over and try again. You've really got to just guide with questions and make that the full presentation. Just two quick examples of that. So even yesterday, I, I had talked to someone on the phone. I'd never met this person. It was sort of a cold referral. This person had already interviewed multiple agents. And within about 30 seconds... I was on a three-way call with someone else who's a, uh, in the licensing process. 
I was on a three-way call within 30 seconds. I had already established that this person loved the Chicago, to the Chicago Bears. How would we know that where the guys here in Utah? But just the questions I asked and initially to try to get to know who the person was. And I made that connection and I really drilled in on that as we were sort of developing this relationship. And despite the fact he's interviewed many people, he's like, I've already got this connection that he's coming our direction. And so asking the right questions sort of led to understanding and building that connection with it. And I got there within 30 seconds of just asking a few questions to identify that. So that's awesome. And that, so none of that was telling. Right. And, and he and his, for his first question to me, what makes you different? My first question back to him, well, let's, let, let's, let me ask you, why are you moving to, why are you moving out of state? Right. I needed to know more information about him before I could start really giving him information that would be applicable. I think the good salespeople will ask a question, when they, just like you did. When he asks you a question, what makes you different? You didn't know where to go that would cause him to react the way he needed to in order to close him. Yeah. So you had to ask another question right back. And once again, goes to show you, whoever's asking the question dominates the conversation. Yeah. I was at a commercial listing appointment just a couple weeks ago with one of our agents. And uh, the, 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 the closing that happened because again, this is a situation where they could have, they could be evaluating multiple agents and the closing, the closing on the way out the door ended up being uh, identifying that this seller had a common relationship with my, like uh, knew my father, but I would have never known. I've never met this guy in my life, but just asking a few quick questions ended up finding out that there's, a, there, there, there was this networked connection happened to me, my dad and happened to be a really positive connection. Uh, but I got there because of some questions I was asking as this interview was sort of concluding at, at this commercial listing. And after we made that connection, the the seller said, you guys just moved up to the top of my list over these other agents. And we wow. signed the listing agreement within a couple days. And it was it was simply that I, I needed to understand what, you know, yes, we needed to understand what their needs were. But a lot of these questions also are aimed at trying to get information from you that you can then build a, a build an, uh, relationship of trust with. So I do a, a, a technique that I get a lot of people together and, and ask them to sell a guy pantyhose. <laughs> and, um, you know, the guys definitely don't wear pantyhose and they don't, they immediately try to pin it on, hey, you're, it's for your wife, for your mother, for all these different things. And it's so interesting as I teach these seminars to get them to stand up and sell pantyhose when they think they're a hotshot salesperson. There is no way in the world they will sell pantyhose unless they ask questions because they've got to find an avenue that that person will use to buy the pantyhose. And I think that relates all the way across the board here. If you're not asking enough questions to gather critical information, you will never know how that person wants to be closed and therefore you will not close them. So Dwayne, you teach these question-based selling courses. I mean, I've seen you up in front of lots of people teaching how to do this. How can these listeners find out more? Because this is like the tip of the iceberg. Like we're just scratching the surface on question-based selling. And yet this is probably the most important technique in order to maximize a, a person's income, closing, closing more agency agreements and then getting those agency agreements at commissions that are going to be better to provide for your family. How can they learn more? So I, I uh, teach a four hour class and we do that every month. And in that link, if you, it's going to be out the, at an, it's going to be at the end of this uh, podcast today. Click on the link and sign up, and come and enjoy the class, and you will gather enough nuggets out of there to change your business. One course will do it. I mean, that'll just get you started, and that really amplifies where you're going to be able to take your business in life. But uh, one other thing I would just quick quickly mention is role play. How do you? How important do you feel like role play is? with question-based selling. hundred percent. I mean, you've got to role play. You've got to be able to act quick on your feet. You've got to be able to know where you're going to go, what questions to ask, when you're going to ask them, how you're going to ask them, what questions you have in an arsenal. I do a thing called ring of fire where I'll sit guys in a or, or real estate agents in a circle and just point at them and say, my mom's a real estate agent. And then I'll say, go. And I want them to be able to come up with 10 questions immediately and transition to the next thing. And once you can role play really well at that and be able to hit any objection out of the park as fast as I throw it at you without pausing, your real estate business is going to explode. That's awesome. Awesome advice. And this is something that I think every agent needs as like 101 critical 
you need to know this. If there's anything you need to know about real estate, you need to know this right here, this technique. It'll change your business for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today on our podcast. Again, there's a link you can click on to join us with our next webinar. We would love to see you in person and interact with you, see what questions you may have for us and how we can better help you and take your business to the next level. Thanks again for listening. See you guys. Thank you.